Welcome to the Climax Academy Live. I'm Jim Miller, the Global Training Manager. Climax has always been about clever machining and welding and valve testing solutions as well as technical support. In this video series we're doing gives people an overview of our time-saving accessories and a good view of how they work with our equipment. This Brunson uh, alignment scope is a good example of a time savings and a, a, a money saver for a great way to align your bearings. Um, if you have any questions about this demo or anything else uh, while the demo is running, uh, please submit them to uh, Zoom Q&A at the bottom of the screen and uh, we'll get to your questions at the end when we uh, go through the, the question and answer. So first of all, always, I like to talk about safety. I want to assess my area, uh, make sure that there's uh, nothing that I'm going to trip on. I want to be careful about any hazards that are around me or around the equipment. Uh, watch for cords, sharp objects, chips, any, any of that kind of thing. Uh, I just want to be real aware of my surroundings. So now that I'm comfortable with the uh, area that I'm working in, um, again, we're, we're going to go ahead and play the video. Uh, John Sabto is our, is our uh, video uh, person today. He's going to be in the video, uh, go walking through the, the accessories and the options of the uh, Brunson scope. And so again, if you have any questions, uh, just click on that Zoom Q&A at the bottom of the screen and, uh, and uh, type your questions in and Jacob will read them to me at the end. So enjoy the video. Hi, my name is John Safko, Applications Engineer Product Trainer, and today we're going to go over the Brunson Obstacle Alignment Tool. So now let's go over some component recognition. So here we have the split ring clamp collar that will attach to the uh, ring of the spherical bearing. These are the adjustment uh, screws. Here are the targets that we'll put in the bearings to align the bearings to each other. This is the white shadow, and then we'll take the, the white, put it in, in the back here to illuminate it. And then this is the Brunson optical scope. So here's an option that you can buy that replaces the, the reticle. Uh, it's a camera kit, so then you can use your laptop uh, to, to view through the scope. So in the initial setup of any line boring application, you're always going to establish your datum uh, with the two outermost bearings. Now the Brunson is meant for aligning any additional bearings in between those. So to make accommodation for the Brunson split ring clamp collar, we have to take this bearing and flip it around. So now we're going to install the split ring clamp collar. So now that we have the split ring clamp collar on, I'm going to add the leveling screws. So now we'll go ahead and attach the scope into the bearing. This is a safety restraint for the scope and I just like to have that at 12 o'clock just so I can see it easily. So now we're going to introduce the target. So the target has a very tight tolerance from this shoulder to the center of the crosshairs. And we always want to make sure that we install it from the solid side of the bearing so that way 
when we put it in there, it's the, the crosshairs are always in the center line of the radius of the spherical bearing. So now we're going to add the shadow box in white, so you can turn that on, install it here in the back. So that way when we put this in, it will illuminate the crosshairs so you can see it through the scope. So first we want to talk about the scope a little bit. At the very end, this is to focus, uh, to make adjustment for your eye. And this adjustment knob is to adjust your focus from one bearing to the next bearing. So now I'm going to go ahead and make the adjustment so I can see through this to my eye. And then go ahead and find the target at the very end. And then I'm going to use these adjustment screws to focus uh, the, the crosshairs to get them perfectly aligned with the target at the opposite end. So now that I've aligned the scope to the end bearing, I've established a perfect datum from this bearing to that bearing. At this point now I can add any targets in between and adjust the bearing itself to make it perfectly aligned to that to the datum. Now I'm going to add this bearing in this target into this bearing, but again I want to make sure that I put this solid, solid shoulder of the target against the solid surface of the bearing. Now that I had the target in position, I assure that the caulking leg is in a different position than my end bearing, so that way I know what target I'm actually looking at. So now I'll go ahead and I'll adjust my fo focal point to that target. I can see that the target's off, so the bearing's off to my datum point. And so now I can go ahead and make a slight adjustment to get it onto that datum point. So now I want to take a step back and go back to the camera option that I talked about in the component recognition. And so by using this, I can replace the eyepiece and the scope attach this which will allow me to view what I can view through the scope through the laptop and make my adjustments in real time and that will eliminate me having to go back and forth which is a real time saver when you're working by yourself. Okay, so uh, now we've reached the uh, question and answer portion of our time together today. Um, so Jacob's got a couple questions that have come in from, from you guys, and uh, uh, what's the first question we got there, Jacob? First question we have is, what is the main benefit of using the alignment scope? Okay, so yeah, the main benefit is now I can use a shorter bar uh, for bearings that are a long distance apart and still get a perfect alignment. Um, historically, without the scope, I would have to use a bar long enough that I could reach from one end of the setup completely to the other end, and then I'd have to be able to um, align that bar, uh, align the bearings using the bar. Well, the bar is heavy, and so I run the risk of the sag uh, being an issue. Um, and, and just handling that long of a bar. So now I can set up a short bar on each end. Well, set up first, I would set up a target on one end and the scope on the other, and then I could make a perfect alignment, and then I can place any other bearings uh, in the middle and just have a short bar on one end that's perfectly aligned with a, with a set of bearings on the other, and then I can just move the bar to the other end and, and do that board, so now I can guarantee that it, everything's in perfect alignment. So that's really the biggest benefit. Another question, how does the Brunston work uh, in bad or inclement weather, uh, rain being an example? Uh, 
Yeah, it doesn't really affect it. I mean, it's a sealed unit. Um, obviously, you're going to want to keep water off of the lens itself. But, um, and, you know, you're going to want to wipe all the targets because they're, they're steel. So you're going to want to wipe all the targets down or, or coat them with oil when you're all done so they don't corrode. But, um, but it's no different than your machine. Uh, you're going to want to care for it in the same fashion, keep it dry uh, when you're done with it, uh, keep it clean. And, um, but see, that's the, the benefit of optics. They're a little more robust than, say, a tracker or a, or a laser. Uh, now, laser and optics are, are, they both have their different purposes, um, but optics are a little bit more robust. You can use them in a little more harsh environment and uh, not have them affect, uh, affected as much by, by the environment, heat, rain. Uh, the other things that can interfere with the signal. So, what is the accuracy of the optic? Okay, so the accuracy is uh, in arc seconds, which is a is a degree of uh, of an angle. So uh, basically, uh, the accuracy of a of a uh, calibrated scope is one one hundredth of a degree or one arc second, which equals uh, one thousandth uh, in seventeen feet uh, for uh, for the accuracy of the scope itself. So in thirty four feet it's two thousandths, and in uh, fifty one feet it's three thousandths. So uh, pretty accurate. Uh, now you're viewing a crosshair through an opening in a target uh, which has a five thousandths diameter hole. So um, so even even uh, you're basically centering that line in, in the middle of that hole, uh, if, if, you, if you remember what that target looks like, like a, a rifle scope target. Uh, you're, li you're basically lining up the crosshairs of the scope and the target uh, accurately to the center line of the, of the target. Why is it important to have the target go in only one way on the bearing? Okay, that's a great question, because that really makes all the difference. Um, so basically on the mount, you have a, a sphere or, or a ball, and then the bearing has a ball also inside of it, and those roll on a perfect center line. Uh, the, the distance from the edge of the ball to the center is what we're compensating for with the target. So, um, so if, that, if, if, that bear, if the target was in the wrong location, other than the center line, as it rolled, it would be higher or lower, or off left or right. But if, but if everything's exactly on a perfect center line, even if that bearing is not perfectly aligned, it doesn't change the center line. And that's really what you're after. You're after aligning that target of the scope to the target of the, of the target and, and making those a perfect uh, cross. And so, if, if it were away from the center, you can see how it would raise or lower, but if it's right on center, even if it's off alignment a little bit, it's still a perfect center line. Hopefully that explains it. Is that it for questions? Okay. Looks like that's it. All right. Well, uh, hey, I really enjoy, uh, enjoyed with your, this time the, this morning. Uh, happy to answer any other questions you might have. If you can think of anything after this time's over, uh, just submit them to askcpmt at cpmt.com, and uh, we'll, we'll get those answers to you. Uh, stay tuned for, for, for future uh, videos. We're going to start having uh, more than just accessories. We've, our last series of kind of covered the accessories that we use as time savers and make your job easier. And uh, so now we're going to start uh, introducing some equipment. Um, so more and more, we, we've done some equipment already, don't, don't get me wrong, so we'll, uh, we'll be adding more and more equipment to these videos and just giving a brief overview of, of how the equipment works. So look forward, to, look forward to joining you again. Take care.